Thank you for coming to our international headquarters. I want you to know how much we really appreciate you. You're very special because the work that you're doing in the chapter, the testimonies you're giving. Can you imagine in thousands of cities around the world, every week there are thousands of men and women that are standing up and sharing their testimony of the power of Jesus Christ to change their life. Wow, what a light to this world. You know, because of the vision, we are globally as one. We're a special unit in the army of Christ. We're reaching people that no one else can reach, from presidents of the nations down to the very humblest person. And I want you to know that your faithfulness is resulting in between two and three million people coming to Jesus Christ every year through FGBMFI. And I just want to tell you, thank you and God bless you. I staggered in the room and fell on the front room and I couldn't even get up. I was so exhausted during that whole week. I couldn't even go to work. I'd drive my car around just to not put my always crying, just driving all over, just driving. And you go home, and Tommy would be there. And when I went in the room, I wept till 3 o'clock in the morning, about a little after 3, close to 3, maybe 3.15. Rose walks in the room, and she sits at the organ and begins to play. And, and by this time, I'm on my knees, and all of a sudden, the spirit begins to move. And I feel myself leaving the room. I can see the housetop. I can see the valley of Downey there in the area. And suddenly, I'm way in space. I traveled to all the continents. I saw men by the millions, seemed like that. I said, well, see as far as you can see, millions. Now I'm looking to the faces. I've never traveled around the world. I see the black, yellow, white. I see the costumes, the way they wore. I had never traveled. And I look at them real close range, and they're frozen as though they're made of stone. Now their hands are lifted. The millions, every hand was lifted as far as I can see, palms up. You've seen people get the baptism of the Holy Ghost with their Shekinah glories on their face. Their lips are just quivering, just there's a hum. That's what I saw. Millions. It's like wave, like wheat fields. A wave, a wave. Then at the close range, the hundreds, and then I'm looking at individual faces. Yeah, their face was just glowing. No more stone, but life. Like dead come to life. And the, and the lips were just literally quivering. And the glory of God was upon them. And that was true in all the continents. 1953, Clifton's Cafeteria, birthplace of the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International. This is the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship breakfast on Clifton's Cafeteria, third floor. We have a full house here this morning. God's Spirit is here. This is a businessmen's group, laymen together. We love Jesus Christ and we take him as our savior, as our healer, as our guide in everything we, we need. God leads and directs us. Everyone that's happy in the Lord say praise the Lord. God laid down my heart to call men back to God and that's a basic reason to bring men back to God, businessmen and laymen. I felt that was where the basis of the churches and the revival has to start from the grassroots. I knew that. And if I can get men fired up, and that was the job. <laughs> Armenia. Armenia, an amazing land. It was the first nation in the world to become Christian. Christianity came to Armenia because of Gregory. He came to tell the good news. But the king didn't want any of this good news. He was a pretty committed pagan. So he threw Gregory down into a dungeon, which was a kind of a death sentence. But Gregory was held in that dungeon in the dark for 11 years. And the king's sister liked Gregory and didn't like what was happening to him. So every night she put down food and water through that little shaft. 
But eventually, the king became ill. Said to his wise men, who can save me from my disease? They said, that guy down in that dungeon, your majesty. So Gregory was hauled up. He healed the king. The king became a Christian. And Armenia became the first Christian nation as early as 301 AD. Neither the Soviet Union nor our team will ever be the same again. Because the love that God put in our heart and the love that he has for you and he has showed us that he wants to pour out his love upon Russia. It was just exciting to get on television and, and have a chance to reach out so many people. We just wanted to encourage you and bless you. Hallelujah. <laughs> the Lord bless you. Thank you very much for your work and your help. We're really thankful. Your father had a great anointing. He had an anointing to originate, to found and to build. You have an anointing to go on in this generation and step out into what God was introducing to the world. A Holy Ghost anointed business community that would far outstrip anything the world had ever seen in its ability to do business for God and do business among men with an anointing that no man in history has ever seen before. This is a new generation. Walk in it, stand in it, and know that this was what God called your father Demas to do, and he turned and he knew by the Spirit that you had that anointing and that you would go on with another anointing married to that that would produce more souls, more deliverances, more healing, more of what your dad saw that he had to go home to heaven before he had the chance to complete. Glory to God. Hallelujah. hallelujah, what he began. Oh, oh, no, no, it'll not die. God gave it life. Hallelujah. And you walk in that life. Hi, I'm Brian Cameron Smith. I'm from the Gold Coast in Australia. I first came into contact with the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship in 1976 in the National Convention in Brisbane when I was invited to attend. And for the first time in my life, I saw the sincerity and the love in people's faces I'd never seen before. In a time in my life when I was already fulfilled in business, I still found something that was empty, and I found the Lord Jesus Christ in those meetings. You see, I was born again, baptized in the Holy Spirit at the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship, the very first meeting I ever attended. I thought I had everything put together. I owned an automobile agency. Our kids were not in drugs. Our kids were not hurting. I hadn't been in jail. But I saw men giving glory to God. I saw men that were successful and doing things that I wish I were. I say to you now, reach out, gentlemen, and get those that seem to have it together for the up and outers, if you will. I encourage you, invite people to the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship so that they too can be walking in the victorious life as you are. I um, had a wonderful encounter with the Lord and then He wonderfully set me free from being involved in Freemasonry, uh, which held me in bondage. I didn't realize it did until the Lord wonderfully set me free. And you know, Jesus came to set the captives. Ladies and gentlemen, Nothing could give me greater pleasure than to be able to pay tribute to you, the members of the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship. You have become the largest layman's organization in the world. 
and I think I know why. Through all those years, you've never looked back. You've always looked up, up to the one great source of truth and hope, love and beauty, grace and glory, our Father, our Creator, our Lord and loving God. There's a passage from the teachings of Jesus, it's in the book of Mark, that I think explains the secret of your success. But whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. All this you have done. The Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship has been serving America and serving God with all the faith, strength, and courage that human hearts can bear. It's your commitment and confidence, your values of faith, family, and freedom that make us know Americans are a good and decent people and that inspire us to believe America can be a great nation. How could I be a heavyweight champion of the world and be a Christian? Because a lot of people think being a Christian is being weak. I am weak, but with Christ I'm strong. My toughest fight has been when I knock the devil out and become a Christian. And you can too. have a chapter meeting right here in your in your buildings right every week every Thursday we meet from about 12 30 to 2 we have uh, half an hour or so of praise and worship and we have testimonies to testify the goodness of the Lord and later we have a message of preaching and uh, if there are newcomers we ask them whether they would accept the Lord and every week three four sometimes as many as 10 or 20 they accept the Lord isn't that pray fantastic? For yeah, we pray for them. So you're not only an uh, ambassador, but you're also a chapter president at FGB Mephi. Yes, ambassador <laughs> for Jesus Christ. Philip is a businessman that uh, just recently sold out his business. It's very large. And uh, tell me about your life here about two years ago. Okay, being a businessman, uh, even though I make some money, I find no peace no joy and no happiness inside me. But outwardly, you may see me very happy and all this will happen. Of course, being a successful businessman, you tend to a lot of entertainment, a lot of night clubbing, a lot of moments around you. Uh, then that will result in a very unhappy family life. Outwardly, outwardly happiness. Outward happiness. Inside, when you go into a house, you have a problem. Problem inside yes. and problem with your wife. Yeah, the family. And problem with the family. The family, yes. Yeah. So, so what happened? So I, when a friend led me to Christ, when I started reading the Bible, yeah, I find that suddenly I have a peace and I have a joy inside me. Even though uh, I saw all my business away, uh, nobody report to me, but I find that the happiness is inside me. Uh, I find it very peaceful, and because of my change of my uh, my living style, style of living. Yeah, your style of living. Because of the Bible, 
we have to follow what Christ has teaches. us. Yeah. Then my wife see the difference in me. Yeah. And she start following me to go to church. Yeah. And the whole family changed. We are much more closer, much more loving now. And now are you much happier now? Of course. Of course. Of course. Happier. Of course. Very well, happy. If you had one word you were going to say to Jesus about what he did for you, what would you say to him? I'll say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> You have to have a prayer so you can be blessed. We are we are not preachers. This is a businessman. I'm with your nation and I'm going to ask Senator Rumi to do the honors and he is one of our esteemed members and Senator if you would do the honors. Yeah. <laughs> now this is uh, this is the legislative branch and the executive branch. <laughs> they're, they're both watching each other. <laughs> so tonight there's redemption. God says, run down here and I will cure you. Run down here and I will heal you. Run down here and I will break the witchcraft, the spirit of witchcraft, the generations of witchcraft. I'll break it off of you. You do have a moment of crisis. Ustedes tienen un momento de crisis. And it's probably a much stronger crisis than anyone realizes. Y es posiblemente una crisis más fuerte de lo que cualquier otra persona se puede dar cuenta. And here is this moment. Y aquí estamos en este momento. And we can take it by our hand. Y lo podemos tomar por nuestras manos. To fix the situation. <coughs> para solucionar la situación. And something will be broken. Y alguna cosa se va a quebrar. And something will be lost. Y algunas se van a perder. On every side. En cada lado. But perhaps God has sent us here Pero tal vez Dios nos ha aquí to pray for